Hey babes, please excuse the weird hair pointing in the wrong direction here. No amount of ironing I did was going to get it to curl in, so I'm just ignoring it. Today we are going to be looking at the Hourglass Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. So this is the new product that they brought out uh, for their complexion range. And of course, this is not the whole thing. Uh, if you have never tried or taken a look at any of the Hourglass Complexion Enhancing products before, they have the Veil Primer, which is probably one of their style products. Uh, you also have the Veil Setting Powder. This one, now I really, really like. Even though I haven't used it quite as much as my Shiseido Setting Powder, this is a beautiful texture. And of course, they have the Veil Eye Primer, which I've not personally tried. For the purposes of today's experiment, I will be trying on all of the Hourglass Veil products on this side of my face. Then I will wear the same foundation and concealer on both sides and at the end of the day I will try and check in to let you guys see which side has held up a little bit better. Now it is my firm belief that there is no one perfect primer formula or setting spray formula for every skin. Everyone's skin is different, everyone's complexion is different and depending on your weather, the amount of sebum or moisture skin has, your daily activity and how you are layering different skincare and different products on top of one another, the results could be very, very different from person to person. So this whole experiment or review is just purely for me to see on my skin whether having all these extra expensive products on this side of my face is going to make a difference to how the foundation looks, how it performs, how it wears, how it lasts, and how it looks at the end of the day. Foundation and concealer choice. This was a tricky one. I had considered using the Hourglass Vanish range of foundations and concealers. However, I want to do this test with products from other brands so that you know that they have not been tested with the Veil products in a more controlled setting and you may not have to run out to buy an Hourglass foundation just to get it to work with the Hourglass Primer. First step is the Veil Primer, the White Cream. Now, if you've not tried this before, uh, it kind of comes out moussey and creamy, but as you rub, it kind of disappears into this powder feel. It's kind of like those silica powders that glide onto your skin. Here's a quick look at the skin texture with primer, without primer. Now, I admit I'm a little bit surprised because this does seem to have a slight optical blurring effect. Not so much in terms of uh, neutralizing all my flaws, but it does brighten up the skin just slightly and I'm not sure how visible it is on camera but the discolorations around my eyes, um, the appearance of pores around my inner cheeks, these are all a little bit less visible. My skin looks just slightly more evened out, more healthy on the side of my face that has the primer. So if you have very good skin or you're just a guy who wants to even out and make your skin look a little bit more luminous but not wear actual makeup makeup, you could technically use this as a one and done on top of your sunscreen. Now, all this beautiful pore blurring and skin tone correction means nothing if the primer is just gonna kind of melt into the foundation when it goes on. So we're gonna have to see if there's any visible difference left. And there's the foundation on. Uh, this is a touch-up artist brush by a Singapore brand called 13 Rushes or Rushes. I, I keep forgetting how they want to say it, but it's 13 R-U-S-H-E-S -E and we have fantastic handmade synthetic cruelty-free brushes. I wouldn't say there's a huge amount of visible difference after the foundation goes on, to be perfectly honest. Now, if I really want to split hairs and go very, very close with the hand mirror, I would say the main difference would be in the appearance of the pores and the lines around this side where I applied the veil primer. This is 
very much more improved than this side. Even on camera, you can see that this side continues to look quite sheeny. It is bouncing off light more, it is showing texture a little bit more, and this tends to be the area of the face where most of us, even the ones with dry skin and no blemishes, do not really want too much light because it just looks oily. Concealer time, I'm just using my usual Tarte Shape Tape. This is the shade Light Neutral. Same hourglass concealer brush for both sides. Concealer is looking pretty good on both sides. I'm not seeing any caking or creasing up or patchiness on either side. But of course, I'm going to have to report back to you guys at the end of the day and you can see which side held up better and if the primer made any difference. Third step is the Veil Translucent Setting Powder and I need to be careful but this is the one with the beautiful gold sifter and the H in the middle. Seriously, a good translucent powder is like airbrush for the face. All your textures are gone but the powder shouldn't be all that visible at the same time. Now notice that I always press my setting powder on because this is the best way to lock down all the cream and liquid products, make sure that you get all the little fine lines and creases and folds without making yourself look overly powdered and mask-like. Of course, I'm going to be fair. I'm going to powder this side as well. So I'll just use um, a drugstore powder. This is Cute Press. Honestly, at this point, Point. I don't see much of a difference between the hourglass setting powder and the drugstore one. So I guess if you're on a tight budget and you need to skip something, setting powder might be the one. Eye primer. Now I wasn't planning on wearing too much eye makeup today, but in the interests of testing. Now this has a cream putty-like thick consistency. It has a slightly beige colored tint, although it rubs out and becomes translucent. So it does feel quite similar in texture to the Urban Decay Primer Potions. Eye primer on, bare lid on this side. Now I'm gonna test a palette which is notoriously tricky to work with because for a lot of people who grab in certain areas it will darken up it will start to go muddy or patchy and uh, for a lot of others this is one of the greatest palettes ever made and that is the Anastasia subculture palette now I have no clue how it's going to look or if there's going to be any difference <laughs> see the slightly smokier shade. The side with the primer is grabbing the pigments a lot more whereas on this side I could really blend and diffuse the color out for that hazy smoky soft look. This side is looking a lot more dramatic. Where I set down the brush was where the pigments were just locked onto the skin or at least the primer. So if you want a more dramatic and very defined look I would say this primer definitely works, but if you want a more hazy and soft look, you may want to go with a drier primer or just your bare lid. Crashing on the moon, calling mission control. Thought I'm getting higher, but I'm flying too. Now again with the blue, you can see how much more intense and it's just grabbing all the pigments down onto the lid wherever I put the brush down. 
and on this side it's very much more diffuse but it's also going where I don't want it to go uh, so you're getting that patchiness which is what made this palette so infamous it's not the easiest to work with to finish off the eye look Crashing on the moon, calling mission control Thought I'm getting higher, but I'm flying too low I see the earth is spinning and I can't let go Crashing on the moon, calling mission control Describe this very simply, I would consider this a slightly drier, tacky type of primer. It is not the very powdery, silicony, slippery kind where your eyeshadows would just dust all over and diffuse out, and it's not the ultra creamy kind that just grabs onto everything as well. So it's a very nice, happy medium, and I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with this one so far. Very quickly, just finishing up my face with a little NARS using a Fenty 125. Finally, the Soft Focus Setting Spray. Now, I would usually suggest that you mist your face with any kind of a mist or spray before your mascara goes on because the additional moisture can soften your mascara and cause your lashes to straighten back down again but it doesn't really matter for me today because I'm staying at home so here goes this mist is beautifully light it just feels like vapor or mist real mist there's no jets of water droplets on your face. It's not gonna mess up your makeup, so they definitely did that right. Just remember to give this a very good shake before you start. And there we have it. It is now 12 p.m. I am going to go off about my day and I will check in a few hours later, let you guys see what's going on on my face. Okay guys, a bit of a midday check-in. It is now 4 p.m and I don't think there's a huge difference between the side with the Hourglass Veil products and the side without. But the concealer is not creasing um, as far as I can see for either side. Now the one thing I will say is I do like the slight luminosity that I get from the Hourglass side. Now this side around the eyes, it is a little bit more dull, a little bit more... I don't want to call it cakey, it's just a little bit drier and more mask-like. The texture is not quite so nice here, whereas on the hourglass side, it's looking very smooth and very light. You know, like I hardly have anything on my skin, even though I'm wearing the exact same amount of makeup on both sides. As for the eye makeup, it's just as gloriously intense. You know, that's about it. I don't see a huge amount of difference at this point. I will check back in with you guys again in a while. So guys, it is now almost exactly 7 p.m. I'm about to go for a long walk, some light exercise, and I'm gonna be wearing a full face of this, of course with the face mask over, so it could be a real disaster by the time I get back. We'll see how well each side holds up, you know, regardless, because I'll have this side as a control, so, you know, if it messes up on both sides, we'll know that it's because of the face mask and the sweat and not because of this. But if this actually holds up better than the side without the hourglass products, then, you know, that's proof of the pudding. Hey 
Hey guys, we are back and it is now 8.50, almost 9 hours that I've been wearing this makeup. So I'm going to zoom you guys in. So this is what it's looking like after 9 hours of wear. Obviously, there is shine on the inner cheek area on both sides, but I did not do intensive physical activity and the weather has been slightly cooler today. So it's not particularly oily looking and both sides held up pretty well. I'll say that the side without the primer has worn off a little bit more on the under eye area. The makeup is looking just slightly more worn down, a little bit sheerer and the texture is showing up a little bit more under my eyes on this side. Now around my nostrils, which is the oiliest part of my face, both sides have worn down quite a bit. I'm going to do a quick blot with a blotting sheet. And this side right here. Ooh, now look at the difference. So this side is the one with all the hourglass products and this side is the one without. Now, this is completely unstaged. I just blotted right in front of you and I was honestly expecting both sides to be about the same because, you know, just looking at both sides of my face, it wasn't a huge amount of difference. Even though I have slightly drier skin, I would say this side of my face would have started to break down in another hour or so, whereas this one probably would have kept going for 12 hours. So what is my final verdict on the whole veil range overall? This is a hard yes. It has a beautiful core blurring finish. It is very light on the skin. It's not extremely silicony and slippery in the sense that makeup doesn't stick well on top of it, but it really helps to blur and even out the skin. Plus, for something that helps to control shine and oil, it actually didn't make my dry areas any drier. Veil Translucent Setting Powder, nice but not really necessary. It made a very minimal difference in the grand scheme of things compared to just other basic drugstore setting powders. Uh, it's a very nice texture, but if you're on a tight budget and you need to choose, I would say this isn't something that you couldn't live without. Veil Eye Primer. This one is a bit of a yes and no. To me, it depends on what kind of eyeshadow formulas you are working with. Now, if you need something to really grip onto eyeshadows and intensify them without being overly creamy and darkening some of the matte shadow pigments, then this is a good one. It's got a semi-dry, tacky texture, so it works pretty well with a lot of the heavy oxide-based pigments in some of the makeup artist brands. But if you have another eye primer that's working well for you and you're not using any shadows that you know give you any issues, then there isn't too much of a reason to shell out the extra coin for this. Veil Soft Focus Setting Spray. This I would say get it and try it if you have the extra budget. I think these two products together work really, really nicely for really locking down the makeup without making it look really powdery and dry. As always, I need to remind you guys, you do not need to buy every single thing. Please choose based on your skin type and what kind of issues you are having with your foundation. If it's not going on nicely and it seems to look a bit cakey or emphasizes your pores at the start of the day, then you may want to go with this one. If you're just having a problem with foundation that looks really nice while it's fresh, but then starts to break down a little bit sooner than you want, and you don't quite get that nice locked down feeling throughout the day, then this may be the one you want to check out. So that is my full day experiment wearing half a face of Hourglass Veil products. I hope you guys found this fun or at least, you know, a little bit informative. I will see you guys again soon. Bye. Crashing on the moon, calling mission control.